the Joe Rogan experience. Zinc's involved in about 300 processes in the body. It's antiviral that we just talked about. It's anti-Alzheimer's because it turns out that the production of the chemical called beta amyloid, there's an enzyme that regulates it, and it's zinc dependent. So if it's working, it's called a secretase. It's called alpha secretase. It's zinc dependent. Beta secretase is not. So beta secretase takes and makes the beta amyloid that causes the Alzheimer's, the inflammation. And with that inflammation, you then start getting the same thing in CTE. So in all these inflammatory conditions, they have the same beta amyloid and cause for CTE, the hyperphosphorylated tau protein that we call not, uh, NFTs, mm -hmm. neurofibril tangles. So they're all related. So what quercetin does is it increases mitochondrial replication in about uh, seven days, doubles the amount of mitochondria intracellularly. Uh, it helps increase in the liver something called IGF binding protein 3, insulin-like binding protein 3. Binding protein 3 is always looked at as being the carrier for IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor, growth hormone, turns on in the liver the production of insulin-like growth factor, which is the main below-the-neck growth factor for our body, improves uh, protein synthesis, uh, decreases inflammation too. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, a sidetrack. When you're talking about beta amyloid and Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. wasn't there uh, a significant amount of fraud that was exposed about uh, Alzheimer's studies that put into question a lot of the uh, ideas that people had about Alzheimer's? Wasn't that something that happened recently? Well, um, in the train of uh, thought on Alzheimer's, you know, they're saying that it's due to the recessive genes. Well, if you look at the real the studies recently, 95% mm -hmm. of the cases of Alzheimer's disease appear to be due to trauma and aging. Trauma and aging. Only 5%. So trauma, like head trauma? Head trauma. Because okay. what happens is trauma stimulates the brain because of inflammation to mm -hmm. increase the production of beta amyloid. And it's because there's they found recently another secretase. What secretases are are the enzymes that convert a protein called APP, um, Alzheimer's precursor protein. And it's a long protein, and two enzymes go in and clip it here and clip it here. And that piece is beta amyloid. That's the bad stuff. That's a beta secretase and a gamma secretase. But they also have something called alpha secretase. So if alpha secretase and gamma secretase cut this APP, it generates alpha amyloid, which is inert, not inflammatory. Mm. And so what did they find recently? Something called delta secretase. Delta secretase and gamma gives you beta amyloid. So how do you generate delta secretase in the body? Trauma, aging. So that's why most of the cases of, um, of Alzheimer's disease are inflammatory based. So what are the things that... Are, are, I'm sorry, but are most cases, is there a certain age where people start to develop it? And, and yeah. has there been any cases of very young people that yes. get Alzheimer's? There's a young form of Alzheimer's, and that might be directly due to having had head trauma and developing this delta amyloid or uh, delta secretase generating amy uh, amyloid, beta amyloid that creates the Alzheimer's disease. As you get older, 65 years of age and above, that is could be 5% genetic, but I think what the literature is really speaking towards is that it all has an inflammatory basis. Remember, trauma in the brain equates out to inflammatory mm -hmm. processes. It's part of the brain's ability to try and protect us. Right. Okay? Remove junk, uh, bacteria, mold, viruses from mm -hmm. the brain, and also metabolites of uh, abnormal... Uh, metabolism in the brain. What well, what was the scandal? The I, I don't Alzheimer's remember. research scandal because it was pretty significant, and they were saying that it it throws into question all of these uh, previous assumptions and therapies that they were providing for Alzheimer's disease. And oh. this person had uh, made a significant amount of money. Yeah, it's the antibodies. It's the treatment protocols. The antibodies against beta amyloid. And they found that even though you were against beta amyloid, you were still progressing on to develop symptoms of uh, Alzheimer's disease. But they were talking about fraud. Uh, 
Now, this was like fraud in Just scientific recently. research. Yeah, this is recent. How a retracted paper affected the course of Alzheimer's but research. It's, but it's one paper, and what was the right. focus of? Okay. June 2024, landmark Alzheimer's Beta research Amway. page. Toward, yep. Uh, was retracted due to fraud allegations. Do we waste billions of dollars and thousands of hours of scientists' time? Maybe not. Or new potentially hopeful drugs on the market targeting the subject of the paper, amyloid beta. The review video breaks down the amyloid beta hypothesis, the fraud itself, and where we go from here. So what is the fraud itself, Jamie? Does it say? So you can find an article that's just not a video, well, not attached to a video. Fake beta amyloid data. See, they've been relying mm -hmm. on beta amyloid as being the focus. And what they're finding is the treatment that addresses beta amyloid, an antibody against beta amyloid, people are still getting uh, progression of the disease. I understand this, but I just want to know what the f what the fraud was. Oh, okay. So what is the fraud? Amyloid hypothesis. Scroll down a little bit, Jamie. What's the fraud? Where does it get to the what? The, what did the paper bullshit about? Putting it into perspective. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Okay. Fifty six paper lead to. Uh, but later published and failed to find. Where's the fraud? What's it say? Uh, let me try a different search. Yeah, just find out like this what was, was the. Fr this Look. seems like very involved. This right. is a science journal. Well, you know that in <clears throat> there are papers that have been written about reproducibility. Mm -hmm. Reproducibility is where a researcher does a paper, makes a claim about the results of his science, and then people look at that and they want to go and reproduce it to prove it. They found that 70% of them can't be reproduced. And when you looked at the actual scientist who did the original work, goes back and tries to reproduce it, 7% failure rate. So there are major publications that have talked about this reproducibility error. I mean, you can go on to you know Google Scholar or else into Google and look at uh, reproducibility. We'll okay, say. here it is. But over the past two years, questions have arisen about some of Ma Masala, how do you say his name? Masilla, Mas Masilla, you were Meslia, yeah. Maslia, Maslia, Maslia's research. Uh, science investigation has now found that scores of his lab studies at UCSD and NIA are riddled with apparently falsified Western blots, images used to show the presence of proteins and micrographs of brain tissue. Numerous images seem to have been inappropriately reused within the within and across papers, sometimes published years apart in different journals, describing divergent experimental conditions. After science brought initial concerns about Maslia's work to their attention, a neuroscientist and forensic an analysis specializing in scientific work who had previously worked with science produced a 300-page dossier revealing a steady stream of suspect images between 1997 and 2023 at 132 of his published research papers. Science did not pay them for their work. In our opinion, this pattern of anomalous data raises credible concern for research misconduct and calls into question a remarkably large body of scientific work. Okay, so it seems like the fact that he was reusing the same images, yeah. stating that they were new images, mm -hmm. so he was uh, stacking the deck in his favor. Right. Because he had a point to make. That God, this, that's so gross. Yeah, $2.6 billion. Jeez. That's what the budget was. That's the National Institute of yeah. Health, yeah. yeah. Jeez. J dwarfs the rest of the National Institute, uh, the NIA combined. Yeah, he was in charge of the Division of Neuroscience. That is so crazy. So the budget of the Division of Neuroscience alone was $2.6 billion in the last fiscal year. And this guy was uh, a key leader for the effort. Man, how gross. But that's pressure and competition and very <laughs> ambitious people who have shitty morals. Yeah. Well, right? That's what that is. Yes. Publish or perish. Publish or perish is the that's, motto, right? That's the motto. If they yeah. don't publish and have a positive finding, they're not going to get funding for the next project that they have. And when someone does publish, like this gentleman who uh, allegedly published falsified data, is there someone who goes over that stuff to make sure that that's not the case? Yeah, the editors of the journal that he's presenting it to. Right, but, but is, is there preferential treatment for people that are established scientists that are thought to be beyond th criticism? Theoretically. Like a gentleman like this who has an enormous position of power and a $2.6 billion budget behind him? Well, but look at the bottom line. Which pharmaceutical company was involved in it? Mm. 
okay? Yeah. Which pharmaceutical? And, you know, that's one of the, the problems that, uh, you know, RFK Jr. will be uh, generating is that as he finds that this science is 70%, you can't reproduce it, meaning that right. it's maybe not accurate. Maybe there's a little but bit of that's being kind. bias. That's being kind. I'm trying to be kind. Yeah, know? because uh, otherwise saying. it's fraudulent, right? It is, correct. I was just reading an article about Alzheimer's that was claiming that Alzheimer's didn't even exist until modern times. Statins. Statins cause Alzheimer's? Is that well, what you're saying? Here, this, this article was connecting it to our diet, the standard American diet. And they were saying that all the bullshit food that people eat is contributing to yeah. this, uh, this condition. And I was, what I was going to get to you is that would lead to an inflammation, correct? You got it. Because the bullshit American diet filled with crap is terrible for you, yeah. and that leads to inflammation. You look at the inflammatory neurodegenerative diseases. What does everyone have now? It says a low inflammatory diet. Right. That's what right. it talks about. Also, in HIT, in high impact uh, interval training, in high impact aerobics, what happens is you can increase a chemical in the brain called brain derived neurotrophic factor, mm -hmm. which is something that helps to improve neuron to neuron communication and neurology of your brain. And I don't know if you saw, we have. Uh, one of your favorite guys, Gerald McClellan. I don't know if you've seen some of the papers that have come out. He had a stroke in 95 uh, fighting um, Nigel Benn in London. Mm -hmm. And during that fight, it was a horrible fight if you've ever seen the— It's know, a crazy fight. It's, yeah. yeah. So anyway, he had a stroke mm -hmm. from that and right. was hospitalized for 11 days in a coma in ICU in London. Gets out his sister, Lisa McClellan— refuses to put him into a nursing home, into a hospice health, takes him into the house in Chicago, and for 29 years dealt with him. She develops an organization called um, Ring of Brotherhood, where Muhammad Ali's niece and son, I think, are part of it. And they take care of um, boxers who are leaving the ring who have symptoms, punch drunk, or what do they call it, uh, precox or pugilistic, uh, dementia Pusy, pugilistic, yeah. 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 And she contacted me and uh, told me about her brother. And I looked at stuff. And what we did was we set up a fund and we paid for his laboratory work and his initial assessment. And we found he was hormonally deficient. So what we ended up doing is putting him on to the hormone replacement and to um, one of the peptides that we use, uh, which is called n acetyl c uh, which stimulates the brain to produce more brain-derived neurotrophic factor. He's in Chicago. I'm in, Ca in California or here in Texas, in Magnolia. And one of our docs in Chicago took the lead. I just gave her what to do. He's 20% better in four months on the protocol. He's now remembering things. He's communicating. He's on the phone, and a, a boxing journalist, uh, Oliver Fennell, came from London to Chicago and wrote a paper, which is called A Day in the Life of Gerald McClellan, and talks about how what happened mm -hmm. and where he's gone. And he's had some improvement. Uh, That's incredible. 20, uh, yeah, phenomenal.